Hello, I'm Mike Canardi, and I'll be going through list rank repair utilizing internal brace technique. In this talk, I'll be going through rationale for why this device is safe and effective for ligamentous list rank injuries, and clinical data which supports its rationale and effectiveness and safety. So why flexible fixation? Proponents of flexible fixation tout that it would allow for physiologic motion across the healing ligament, it would obviate the need to remove the hardware and associated costs and any delays in recovery this may cause. However, there's very few clinical and biomechanical studies which would support the use of flexible fixation. To date, cross screws or plate and screw fixation is the gold standard for ligamentous Liz Frank repair. We sought to investigate the effectiveness and safety of ligamentous Liz Frank repair utilizing flexible fixation with the internal brace at our institution. Indications for this device include isolated ligamentous Liz Frank injuries, Liz Frank injuries including the intercuneiform joint, athletes who are seeking motion sparing procedures, and those who wish to avoid the use of secondary hardware removal. The use of this device should be cautioned in patients with osteoporosis or osteopenia, patients with bony comminution, or patients who have high energy ligamentous Liz Frank fracture dislocation and smokers. In 2021, our lab investigated the effectiveness of the ligamentous Liz Frank internal brace fiber tape repair using a cadaveric model. In this study, we sought to compare the ligamentous Liz Frank repair utilizing the internal brace single limb versus the addition of a supplemental limb as the subject group. For our construct, we had nine match pairs. We had stepwise section of the Liz Frank ligament. We measured diastasis between bony articulations. Specimens were static and cyclically loaded and failure was a diastasis of greater than two millimeters in this interval. You can see here, when we look at diastasis measurements, at increasing loads in the single limb internal brace Liz Frank repair, there were three failures, where there was only one in the supplemental group. If you look even closer, the failure in both groups was from the same specimen, which was very osteopenic. With respect to clinical imaging, you can see here a failure on the left a ligamentous Liz Frank repair with internal brace with widening greater than two millimeters of diastasis after loading, and on the right-hand side, an intact specimen that completed loading without failure, no widening to Liz Frank articulation when the supplemental limb was used. With respect to angular measurements and motion through the midfoot joints, you can see that the use of the supplemental limb affords stability to the construct and motion that is nearing physiologic with the single limb, there was wider variations of motion in the sagittal and coronal planes, and this increased at higher loads. In conclusion, internal brace repair for Liz Frank injuries with supplemental limb is superior to internal brace alone in a cadaveric model. Moreover, the use of supplemental limb provides additional stability to the construct, which is nearly twice as strong as a single limb Liz Frank internal brace repair. After completing the previous study, we then sought to compare the use of supplemental limb utilizing the internal brace technique for Liz Frank repair to transarticular cannulated screws in our ligamentous Liz Frank model in a cadaver. Here is a representation of our repair construct. You can see the cannulated screws on the left and the internal brace with supplemental limb on the right. On the left-hand side, you can see an intact specimen, a section specimen, and on the right, we utilize CAT scan to help measure diastasis more accurately in this follow-up study. This on the left represents how we sectioned the ligaments. It was done under a loaded specimen. The specimen was then cyclically loaded after repair was performed. You can see here, up to 1,000 newtons, the screws and internal brace with supplemental limb performed similarly. At exceeding loads, the internal brace demonstrated no failures until 2,000 newtons with one specimen. And when looking at screws, there were two failures beyond 1,200 newtons in the four millimeter cannulated screw group. With respect to the CAT scan imaging and diastasis at the intercuneiform space, the Liz Frank repair utilizing internal brace with supplemental limb demonstrated less widening when compared to screws. We then calculated a probability of non-failure, and at higher loads, there was a 25% increase in probability of failure using cannulated screws compared to Liz Frank repair with internal brace and supplemental limb in this cadaveric model. In conclusion, Liz Frank repair utilizing the internal brace with supplemental limb technique demonstrates stability, which is similar to screw fixation across these joints. At higher loads, the internal brace technique has improved survivorship to screws, and across the intercuneiform joints, 
The internal brace with supplemental limb demonstrates improved stability compared to cannulated screws utilizing our loading data and CAT scan models. With respect to clinical outcomes, we sought to study nine patients who had undergone Liz Frank internal brace repair with supplemental limb over a six month period. We had nine patients included in the study, all who received Liz Frank internal brace repair with supplemental limb. Exclusion criteria included those with bony fracture dislocation of the Liz Frank articulations. These were all isolated ligamentous Liz Frank injuries. All underwent the same surgical treatment. We monitored them for clinical outcomes, hardware complications, and return to work or sport. In summary, the major difference between accelerated protocol, which we use with the internal brace repair supplemental limb, is at two weeks, the patients can begin increasing their weight bearing in the cam boot, whereas the traditional repair, we hold until the six week x-ray. This then extrapolates out further where those patients begin weight bearing as tolerated and transitioning from the cam boot at six weeks in the internal brace repair, and then may begin walking, progress to jockeying as they see fit, where as the traditional group are held in the boot until the 12 week mark and a radiograph demonstrates bony stability. At the 12 week mark in the internal brace repair, we then allow return to work or play if they're fully conditioned. In the traditional group, we are usually holding them till 16 to 18 weeks for return to play. When we analyzed our data, we had no hardware failures or hardware complications. The only complication reported in our nine patient series was hypersensitivity at the two week follow-up, which resolved by the six week follow-up. Radiographic analysis demonstrated some disuse osteopenia, which resolved in patients by the 12th week. Conclusions of this clinical study is that this device is safe and effective out to six months. We saw no hardware complications. And in fact, we recognized an earlier return to work or sport than we had previously studied using hardware such as screws or plate fixation for Liz Frank repair. Our conclusion is that Liz Frank repair with the internal brace supplemental limb technique is clinically safe and effective for treating purely ligamentous Liz Frank injuries in this patient population. So in summary, ligamentous Liz Frank repair utilizing the internal brace with supplemental limb technique is safe and effective. It can withstand loads greater than 1,000 newtons in a cadaveric model. And in our clinical series, there were no failures in the early post-operative phase out to six months. Moreover, it afforded patients with an early return to work and return to play and a safe post-operative protocol that was accelerated compared to traditional repair. Thank you.